and Roller Company. Um, I want to review what we talked about last time. And uh, basically we're talking about conductors and insulators in terms of materials. And pretty much everything on the planet fits on this chart somewhere. Conductors are low resistance, insulators are high resistance. Today we're going to talk about this group here, which is kind of in between their semiconductors. And they range from about 10,000 ohms to about 100 million ohms. Okay, so the way we measure most materials is we take one cubic centimeter of the material, place an electrode on opposite sides, uh, which is just a piece of metal, and then measure the resistance with some sort of resistance meter. Now that, that range that we talked about of um, 10,000 ohms to 100 million ohms seems like an awfully large range and how can rubber coverings with such a high resistance dissipate any static or be conductive enough to, uh, to have static flow through them? Well the reason is that um, there's a lot of contact area, much more than just uh, one square centimeter. And as if in this example, I've got a rubber that's a centimeter thick. The web is contacting two centimeters wide, and frequently it's much, much greater than that, maybe up to 180 or so degrees. And then in this example, it's 100 centimeters long. So we have 200 square centimeters, so that um, that 100 mega ohm resistance would actually be divided by 200. The other thing about rubber is it doesn't really obey Ohm's law very well. So even though we measure 100 million uh, ohms on cubic centimeter basis, when we measure on a roller, and rollers are measured for static purposes from the surface to the core. So we would apply a voltage here, current goes through down to ground, we measure the, uh, the flow. Um, rubber doesn't really obey Ohm's law very well, so even though we have, uh, it should be 100 million ohms for, or, uh, for this example, it might be half of that. The static electricity is a big problem in the converting industry, and normally we're processing insulating webs, polyethylene, polypropylene, and so on. There's a lot of static that can be generated. The static uh, can cause injury to personnel through shocks or people being thrown back and, and falling on something else. Uh, there are product and process effects such as web tracking, wrinkling, and that sort of thing. Uh, static can attract uh, dirt and contamination. It can damage electronics, and then there's always the danger of fires and explosions if um, solvents are being used such as a Gravier coat or something like that. Well the question is can rollers actually remove static from webs and basically the answer is no in most cases. Now you would think on that um, our resistance chart that if we move to more and more conductive materials that they should be able to take off more static. Well here we have just a metal roller and uh, which would be a very very low resistance. The web is charged and you can see it has an opposite charge on the bottom than it does the top. As this approaches the uh, and makes contact with the metal roller the side that contacts the metal roller is shorted to ground. Ground is zero volts. So there is no charge on that web in this area. The charge on the top is basically unaffected because it doesn't contact. Then as the web is departing from that roller, the plus charges here attract negative charges up from ground and recoat the web with charges. So <clears throat> there's almost no difference in the charges on the web as it goes over uh, a metal roller. Let's do a little experiment to see how much static we can make. These are styrofoam cups, insulators, and a handheld static meter. And the way this works is you take the reading about an inch from the object. So 
Right now this is showing not quite 2,000 volts. And insulators have static on them basically all the time at one level or another. So I'm going to just rub that on my head one time. And uh, now I've got 14,000. So this sounds like a lot, but it, uh, I can barely feel that it doesn't make my hair stand up at all. So <clears throat> static problems in converting, I don't think we're talking about 10,000 volts. We're talking about big numbers, 50, 75, 100,000 volts. So let's say that we're dealing with 50,000 volts on a web, and we have uh, a roller that's 50 million ohms. Is that enough to dissipate static? Well, according to Ohm's law, volts is equal to amps times uh, ohms, that we could still dissipate a current of one milliamp. Milliamp is a lot of static. You know, static voltages are very high, static currents are very, very small. So even though the rubber roller is very resistant, it's still conductive enough to dissipate static. Now rubber covered rollers or insulated covered rollers have one additional static effect that metal rollers do not have and that's called the triboelectric effect. Tribo is friction, so we have electricity generated by friction. So as our insulating web, it's, which in this case we're assuming it's not charged, it's kind of unrealistic, but just for example it's not charged, and as it contacts the rubber, or whatever this is, there is a transfer of electrons based on the chemical structure of the two materials. Some materials want to gain electrons, others want to lose electrons. So in this case, the rubber is gaining electrons. It ends up being negatively charged. The web ends up being positively charged. So <clears throat> if the web is coming to the roller, and it's negatively charged on the bottom where it's going to contact the rubber, this triboelectric charge that's generated as, by contact is actually going to neutralize. If the, if the bottom is charged positive, then it's going to add to it. This is an example of what's called the triboelectric series. So the way this works is if you can take any two materials from this chart, press them together, pull them apart, measure the charge on each one, the one that's higher in the table is going to be char positively charged and the one lower is going to be negatively charged. And then the distance between the two materials, the farther they are apart, the more charge is going to be generated. There's a lot of these charts that are available on the internet. Unfortunately, um, there's a lot of discrepancies between the different sources. Some will have one material at the bottom and a different one will have the same material at the top. Um, so they're not too useful in trying to design rollers that um, have sort of a combination surface where you have you know, positive material and negative material and you try to um, not have any effect on the web. So even though rubber rollers uh, cannot eliminate static problems on webs, they are useful uh, to help control it. They're part of the static control puzzle in combination with other uh, non-roller methods such as tinsel and active ionizers and so on. We have a family of which we call Limistat here at American Roller that are uh, electrically conductive materials and uh, we have them in various hardnesses and polymers and conductivity ranges. Uh, please contact your American Roller representative if you need to talk about those. So static is a big problem in the converting industry. It uh, dangerous to personnel, shock hazard. It affects the product in wrinkling and uh, tracking, stacking a die cut product, that sort of thing, dirt and contamination, our issues, damage to electronics, and there's always a possibility of explosions. So there's a number of ways to address static issues. One of those is through the use of electrically conductive rollers. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time. There you go, Sparky.